Hackers are trying to break into your accounts, but this device will make it much harder. 2FA is a staple for security. You're probably familiar with the annoying texts, pings, or six digit codes, but I wanna share with you why this device is safer than those options and how I accidentally ended up using it in my life. First, the basics. 2FA stands for two-factor authentication. This combines a password, something you know, with something you have. Something you have can mean a lot of things, like a phone that receives SMS texts, a unique six digit code, or a hardware key. This is important as passwords alone are mismanaged, breached, and prone to bad practices, so asking people to combine passwords with something else greatly boosts security. But what's wrong with normal 2FA that makes this device even exist? Texts aren't very secure and have been the sole reason many people, even high-level individuals, were compromised. SIM swapping attacks are generally targeted attacks, but highly effective in bypassing two-factor authentication and have proven time and time again that relying on SMS for 2FA codes may be better than nothing, but it is still highly problematic for security. Beyond security, you have to give your phone number to countless websites, a unique identifier which, for many, is tied to their identity. Especially since phone numbers are so difficult to change and most people only have one or two of them, so it makes it incredibly easy for services to correlate who you are on the internet. Pings are secure and convenient, but generally rely on closed ecosystems and services that utilize them like Apple, Google, Duo, or others. We believe 2FA should be an open standard that doesn't rely on each service rolling out its own version of things, which leads to TOTP. Despite what many believe, the QR codes you scan for the six digit codes can be used on any TOTP app, not just Google Authenticator. TOTP is secure, gives users the freedom to use it how they please, and is overall a solid option, but, even TOTP is victim of real-time phishing, since an attacker's fake website can steal and use the code in the 30-second window. It can be inconvenient, and it isn't the most user-friendly protocol, or else we wouldn't have a 28-minute guide on it. So here's where UTF comes in, or what most people know as 2FA hardware keys. These are easy to use, plug and go, and with a tap of the device, you're in. No personal information is required, it's an open standard, and they're overall the most secure option, since TOTP still requires disclosure of information that can be compromised, whereas UTF uses local checks, making it a better version of something you have. Yubico sent us a couple YubiKey review units that I used for over <laughs> eight months. Sorry, Yubico but at least I can relay a lot of information about the experience. This is the 5C Nano, and here's the 5C NFC. The C on both is for USB-C, the Nano is for Teeny Tiny, and the NFC means it supports NFC. There are others geared towards different devices, but these were my choices for the devices that I use. Setting them up is simple. Visit a service that supports UTF, tap the key when prompted, and that's it. Now when you log in, it'll ask you to tap the key after entering your password. I almost always keep my 5C Nano in my laptop, so when I log in, I just reach over, tap, and I'm done. No switching windows for 2FA codes, no getting up to find my phone for a text or a ping. And what's really great about this is even with the key plugged in 24-7, it's still, by almost every form of measurement, more secure than the other 2FA methods we outlined. Additionally, hardware keys better integrate with your operating system for extra functionality, like you can require a key to log in, or even do things like needing a key for admin access in your terminal. So objectively, these actually are the gold standard for 2FA in 2022, but there are still some limitations. The device uses a port, which for some machines <coughs> is a big deal. You don't need to always leave the key plugged in, but it's a great option for the sweet spot of security and convenience. Services have to support UTF. Even security progressive services still don't do it. Yubico actually has a catalog of supported accounts that you can use to reference what accounts support YubiKeys. And there's also 2FA directory, which shows you U2F support as well across different accounts. And it also shows you TOTP and other 2FA methods. It's actually a great resource that you should check out down in the description. With that said, the YubiKey directly supports TOTP. So for services that don't support UTF, you can still use TOTP with the same device in the same way. If you lose your key or one breaks, you're done. 
With TOTP, you can back up the seed. With pings, you can have multiple devices. But with a hardware key, that's kind of it. The solution here is to buy two or more keys and register each of them to your accounts. So if something happens to one of them, you have another key as a backup. It goes without saying, people, you should try to keep your keys in different places. For me, I have one in my laptop and one on my wallet. So it's unlikely I'll lose both. Cost is a thing. TOTP is free to use, texts are no more expensive than paying for your cell plan, but hardware keys are an entirely separate purchase, ideally two or more. And finally, there are devices you need to think about and manage. As someone who's a digital minimalist at heart, I was very hesitant to move over to UTF for this reason alone, but it actually just kind of sticked. My original intent was just to review the units, but the Nano stayed in my laptop and I never stopped using it, which I think speaks to how clean of an experience they are. Despite UTF hardware keys being touted as a more advanced solution, they're actually a very balanced middle ground that I've fully integrated into my workflow, and the only thing holding back this tech is the lack of websites supporting it. So should you get a hardware key? I think you should if you're getting two or more, you have services that support UTF, you're ideally able to keep one plugged in if you value convenience, and you're okay with the cost and management of new devices in your life. Now, if hardware keys just don't work for you, you're not interested in them, the next thing we recommend is TOTP, which seems simple, but can actually be a little bit complex when you start diving into it. So definitely watch our guide here to learn how to get started and use TOTP properly to be as safe as possible. We'll see you over there in that video. And the last thing I'll mention, I only tested YubiKey, but there are some awesome open source alternatives, which I just haven't got my hands on yet, but I hope to. So stay subscribed because I want to check those out too. See you next time on TechLore.